Hi, this is Scott. Welcome to The Tall Woodworker. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a live edge river table using an angle grinder and a jigsaw. Stick around, I'll show you how. So if you're like me, you may not have easy access to smaller live edge slabs at your local lumber store or hardwood store. So you can improvise if you really need to. So what I have is this board of walnut that has a really nice grain pattern to it, but as you can see, there's no live edge on here. So we're gonna make a live edge. Now, before I get started, if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. I've got a lot of cool things coming up this year, and since it's summertime-ish in Chicago, getting warm in my shop, I plan on doing a lot more uh, than I was before. If you like what you see in this video, go ahead and hit that like icon down below before you get started on this. I really do appreciate it. And uh, be sure to comment on what you see. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. I know this is an unorthodox way of creating a live edge river table, but uh, it's basically the only option I have right now. So uh, we're gonna get started right now and get to work. The first thing I do is measure out the length I need for my boards. I'm aiming for around 13 inches. Then I cut them out using my crosscut sled. Then I get a straight edge on one side of each board. Okay, so now that I've got these cut down a bit to size with uh, three straight edges, uh, it's time for me to figure out how I want these to look. So I'm lining up the two rough edges so that they face each other. And then I'm just gonna kind of draw in kind of a wave pattern. I want the river to kind of flow in like an S curve style. So I'm gonna be a little bit higher up here and be a little bit lower down here as I do this. And I wanna kind of go with a bit of a, just something like that, nothing too much. And then here, maybe something like that. So now I will clamp these boards to the bench grab the jigsaw and we're gonna do a cut close to the line. Okay, so now it's time for probably the messiest part of this entire project and I want to grind down this line with the angle grinder. So this is a 36 grit uh, flap wheel disc for my angle grinder. And we're just going to kind of smooth out uh, this edge a bit. Using the flap wheel is pretty simple. I try to take sweeps from one end of the board to the other without stopping anywhere. If I were to stop, it would create a divot in the edge that just wouldn't look right. Although it ended up being irrelevant in my final design, I did slope the edge toward the inside where the resin would make contact. Because I used a powder-based dye, and a lot of it, you really can't see into the resin and see this detail. Had I chosen a liquid dye, it may have let more of the depth show through. Now it's time to make the mold. I cut a piece of MDF to just about 13 inches square. Then I cut four strips that will be used for the sides of the mold. I see a lot of people using sheathing tape on their molds. However, I have found that clear packing tape, along with mold release, works very well. I cover the entire bottom surface, then put a strip of tape on each of the sides. I used my workbench as a reference surface for where the sides should screw into the base, and put three screws on each side. These are spack screws, so no pre-drilling was required. Once all four sides are screwed in, I put one screw on the end to tie the sides together. After a quick test fit, I seal up all the joints with silicone. This is the most critical step. I spent a lot of time making sure every gap was filled. Resin will find any way out, and if it does, you will end up with a huge mess on your hands. 
Once it was all sealed up, I put the boards in and started mixing... Ah, oh, crap. So, this section is a comedy of errors. In this clip, I'm explaining that my GoPro suddenly stopped recording, and because I'm listening to music while I'm mixing resin, I didn't hear any of the beeps, so the entire pour was not filmed. Little do I know here, my microphone was acting up and the audio was completely garbled. The mic issue was my fault for not charging the transmitter, but the video issue? Uh, I was really upset that I didn't capture the pour, which is something I know a lot of people like to see. That blame goes on my GoPro 7 Black. This isn't the first time that this happened, but I really hope this doesn't happen again. And so I continue on. I'm removing the project from the mold, which, thanks to the mold release, it came out pretty easy. There is finally the finished product. Uh, this was the intended top side, but admittedly I'm almost a little bit liking this bottom side a bit better. We'll have to see how it turns out uh, once everything is planed up and everything like that. So still got to do some cleanup. You get the silicone off of here, then we will send it through the planer a few times and uh, look at the final product. Harbor Freight Chisels. They're good for when you don't care about the condition of your chisels, like removing silicone gunk from your project. So it is now day three. Um, I finally got this sent through the planer and uh, it's looking really nice. So the next steps are going to be to send this through the table saw to clean off all the edges and get rid of the jank on the sides of these things. Then we'll put an edge profile in it and start sanding. Uh, it's looking really good. I'm still trying to decide if I like the A side, which I kind of prefer the wood grain on side A and the resin pattern on side B. Not gonna know which side's gonna be the top until I get the finish on this. So let's get started. I just nibbled off the end of the all wood edges to make sure I had a clean line. Then I cut down the hybrid edges to get it as square as I possibly could. When cutting through the resin, I tried to feed through the blade as quickly as possible to prevent the resin from melting. Over at the router table, I use a chamfer bit on the four corners, then around all four sides, top and bottom. So now that we got the edge profile on, it's time to get sanding. So as I said in a previous video of mine, I really like using the sand net discs. They are a mesh disc instead of it being your typical sandpaper that's on there. And inside of each one of these, they give you this uh, interface pad that you attach to your sander. And then all you really need to do is just pop this right on. Don't need to line up any holes or anything else like that. Uh, it's really nice because uh, sucks up dust a lot better and everything else like that. So, so I'm not going to bore you with all of this sanding. When I get back, this will be fully sanded. Okay, I lied a bit. Here's a quick sanding shot just to explain what I did. I started with 80 grit and worked my way up to 400 grit. Between each grit, I sprayed water to raise the grain and also to help get any resin dust off. Then I wiped down with acetone to clean up anything that remained. Resin dust, well, it sticks to anything, so you're gonna need to do a lot to get it off. At this point, I was starting to like one side just a little bit more than the other. Time for finish. I'm using Odie's oil because it really makes the walnut pop and it makes my shop smell nice. I wipe it on, then wait for about a minute or two before buffing it out. I ended up applying two coats on all sides. The base I had was actually removed from a previous end table, though I did touch it up a bit with some paint. It already had screw holes in it, so I used those to mark the new holes to drill into the bottom of this project. 
I made sure not to drill into any resin, only into the wood. This was the point of no return on deciding which side I was going to use as the show side. I have no regrets. And there's the final product in its final resting space next to my chair in the living room. So I ended up using the side that has the better grain pattern on it. Uh, I definitely liked both sides. This was kind of a Sophie's Choice type of thing, but I am glad that I went with the side that has the better wood grain pattern. I just think it looks uh, a little bit more bold. It popped a little bit better once I put the Odie's oil on it. So definitely going to leave it on this side. Well, not that I have a choice because there's four screws on the underside right now. I'm not exactly going to flip this thing around. I had a lot of fun building this. I did learn a few things about it along the way. Knowing not to take it out too soon, that's pretty much a big thing. I did take it out after about 24 hours of being in the mold. And while the resin was solid, it wasn't fully hardened. So it did actually flex a bit as I was trying to remove it from the mold and even while I was sending it through the planer. Luckily, I was able to just clamp it down on top of the mold, flatten it out straight away. I'm really happy that I did the fake live edge on this. I don't have easy access to live edge slabs, especially from walnut, and especially in such smaller pieces. A lot of what you see are just these very large six foot boards that cost hundreds of dollars. This total project cost me about $50, and the majority of that was actually the resin. Probably spent about $10 in the wood that's just in here because I had a couple of walnut boards laying around. So I would definitely recommend if you're trying to get the live edge look, just do your best. Don't try to go over a template or anything else like that. Just draw a design and cut it with a jigsaw, and then that flap disc made a really good work of smoothing everything out. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to comment on what you think of my design here. Let me know what you like, let me know what you dislike. I'm uh, always looking to hear different criticisms and as well as hearing what you guys think about my projects. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. As of this recording, I'm at 53 subscribers on my channel. My channel is about eight months old, so I'm really hoping I can get to that 100 subscriber mark before I get to the one year anniversary of my channel. So if you really like what you see here, you like what I do, hit that subscribe button. I'd uh, really appreciate it. And if you're interested in getting notifications when I post new videos, make sure you ring that bell and you can get notifications when those videos come out. Until next time, thanks for joining me in my shop and in my living room. See you next time.